Hello, Popcorn Recap here. Today, we'll talk about a 2017 comedy romance movie called The Little Hours. It follows the story of three medieval nuns living a simple life in their convent. Things then change when an eggplant-bearing young man arrives to work there. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary. The story begins with Sister Fernanda walking across a field with her favorite donkey. She runs into Sister Ginevra when she arrives at the convent. Ginevra starts interrogating Fernanda about where she has been. Fernanda responds by pointing her finger at the donkey to avoid having to answer them. Moments after that, the gardener passes by and greets the nuns like every rational human would do during a fine day. In response, the nuns verbally attack the poor bloke to chase him away. It is at this moment that we learn these nuns have no chill. Now, let's learn a little bit about our soon-to-be favorite medieval nuns. Ginevra is that nosy girl in school that loves to report other people's shortcomings to the teacher. In the case of these nuns, it is the convent's head nun, Sister Maria. Sister Fernanda is a woman of action and has the foulest mouth among the nuns in the convent. She's that classmate who is most likely to stab you in the hands with a pencil just because you looked at her. In short, she's a scary MF that you'd want to avoid tangling with if possible. As for Sister Alessandra, she's the goody two-shoes girl in class that keeps herself busy with school activities. At the moment, Alessandra is working on embroidery while figuring out what the hell is her purpose in life. Ultimately, Ginevra and Fernanda share a strange friendship brought by their envy of Alessandra's special treatment in the convent. You see, Alessandra's dad is a generous financial donor to the convent. Naturally, the convent will treat his daughter well to ensure that he'll keep donating. Sadly, his habit of being too generous with the donations is working against Alessandra's plans. It turns out that Alessandra doesn't want to stay in the convent all her life. She wants to get married, but for that to happen, her father needs to prepare her dowry. Sadly, he can no longer afford that because his business is not doing well, and most of the money he earns goes to the convent. Due to such circumstances, he now wants Alessandra to give up on getting married and consider the forever alone life of being an embroiderer instead. Her meeting with her father causes Alessandra to get depressed that day. Fernanda and Ginevra try to ask Alessandra about her father's visit, but she's too distracted that she barely responds. Then, the nuns run into the gardener again, and when he smiles to greet them, Fernanda and Ginevra go nuts. Surprisingly, Alessandra, looking to blow off some steam, joins them in abusing the poor man. After that, the gardener complains to Father Tommaso about what happened with the nuns. Since Tommaso is in a hurry to leave for the market, he asks the gardener to reconsider or at least wait for his return. In the end, the gardener leaves since he can't bear the abuse he received from those foul-mouthed nuns. Meanwhile, in a luxurious castle somewhere, the married couple Bruno and Francesca enjoy their breakfast. Well, one of them at least, because Francesca is tired of her husband, who can't seem to shut up. To cope with this, she continuously flirts with her servant, Masetto. It would seem that Masetto isn't sure how he feels about his master at the moment. However, they end up dancing between the sheets later that night. This time around, Masetto gets tired of Francesca, who now can't seem to shut up about her husband. Then, Bruno storms into the room and Masetto quickly bolts out to the courtyard. Bruno chases Masetto to the servants' quarters. Although Masetto tries playing coy, Bruno learns he's the culprit by listening to his fast heartbeat. He then cuts his hair to identify him quicker the next day. When Bruno leaves, Masetto quickly cuts the hair of the rest of the sleeping servants. He hopes to confuse his master this way, and it works out. Sadly, he doesn't enjoy his victory for long because the thirsty Francesca pounces on him later while Bruno and his guards watch from a distance. After learning that his master wants his balls cut off, Masetto makes a run for it. Sometime later, he encounters Father Tommaso, who is currently struggling to salvage the convent goods that fell in the river. Although Tommaso refuses his offer to help, Masetto goes ahead and helps him out anyway. By the looks of things, the priest has been splurging on the divine wine he's carrying. Well, so much for the blood of Christ then. Feeling indebted to the young man, he offers him a place to sleep that night. After bonding over drinks later, Masetto reveals his predicament to the priest. As a result, Tommaso takes him back to the convent and plans to hire him as the new gardener. To avoid having issues with the foul-mouthed nuns, he introduces Masetto as a deaf mute. Of course, he lies about the convent's goods, saying he got robbed by bandits. One day, while Fernanda and Alessandra almost argue, they see the new gardener. Alessandra and Masetto lock eyes, and they both smile at each other. Feeling jealous that she didn't receive the same treatment, Fernanda pulls an axe and threatens to chop Masetto's head off. Fortunately for him, Sister Maria arrives to save his head in time. Maria also takes the opportunity to inform Alessandra about what happened to their goods. She says Alessandra needs to work twice as much now, but she'll give her some help. 
While working later, Alessandra's tool breaks, so she goes to the tool shed to have Masato fix it. While the man works on it, Alessandra starts ranting about the things happening in her life. Poor Masato, it seems he's a magnet for people that can't seem to shut their mouths. Later that night, Tommaso and Masetto share a drink and catch up. The priest asks Masetto how he's faring so far in the convent. The young man plays it cool, but the priest knows what evils the nuns there are capable of doing. Speaking of nuns doing evil things, Fernanda sneaks out and steals some blessed wine from Tommaso's sacred stash. She also brings a friend, and they have a party in Alessandra's room. Ginevra tries to be a killjoy and threatens to report them. She fails and ends up getting drunk with the sacred wine too. The girls take this opportunity to talk about their experience regarding sleeping with a man, which is basically non-existent. Strangely enough, it all ends with the girls having a makeout session. Hmm, I guess they didn't have a choice anyway. After that night, Alessandra locks onto Masetto. She surprises him the next day with a custom embroidered hanky. She also offers to help him dig a ditch, but it almost ends up in him drilling her right then and there. Fortunately for them, the church bells manage to knock the freaky out of them. Meanwhile, Fernanda is up to no good once again. She meets up with her friend and prepares a drug that's supposed to hypnotize Masetto into doing her. Why go through all that trouble when dropping her robes will have the same effect, right? After taking it and doing some blood ritual or something, they then go into Masetto's shed. Like always, Fernanda opens up with violence. She threatens Masetto into submission with a knife to his throat. After that, she and her friends start getting their freak on with him. When Masetto gives in to his desires, the two girls immediately leave and blueball him. After a rather enjoyable day, Masetto tells Tommaso that he'll be more than happy to stay and work in the convent. The priest is concerned for the young man, especially since he thinks the nuns are giving him a hard time, which technically, they are. However, I'm willing to bet that Masetto likes the level of hardness that he gets from them. Before the two men can indulge in their usual wine-drinking sessions, Sister Maria appears bearing news. It seems Bishop Bartolomeo is stopping by for a visit to the convent. Tommaso gets caught off guard and scrambles, probably to hide all the wine tasting he's been doing lately. The next day while Bartolomeo visits, Masetto sneaks into Alessandra's room, hoping to get some action. It doesn't happen because Alessandra's helper arrives, and Bartolomeo too. On top of all that, he accidentally reveals that he's not a deaf mute. Sometime later, Ginevra snitches Fernanda's hidden secret involving the convent's donkey. Tired of not being taken seriously, Ginevra tries her hand at the drugs and blood ritual her fellow sister used earlier. Let's just say it's not as cool looking as it was with Fernanda. A few moments later, Alessandra confronts Masetto about his lies. Before he can explain himself, a wasted Ginevra arrives and starts getting freaky on Masetto. Then, someone else enters the shed, and Ginevra hides alongside Alessandra. As for who entered, it's Fernanda, and like earlier, she points a knife at his throat and binds him. She then takes him outside across the fields. It looks like she must be getting tired with the donkey now. Anyway, Alessandra and Ginevra follow them to the nearby forest. When they catch up to them, Alessandra gets shocked to see a bunch of women dancing around a bonfire with no clothes. She also sees Fernanda and her friend, who are busy preparing for another ritual involving Masetto's eggplant probably. By the looks of things, Fernanda isn't just a violent biatch, but a crazy witch too. When Fernanda prepares to stab Masetto, he decides to reveal his secret in an attempt to save his life. Things quickly get messy after Ginevra loses her mind and starts scaring the witches. After she knocks out Fernanda's friend, she takes the donkey and returns to the convent. Once there, she informs Bartolomeo about the witches. In the end, the three nuns start exposing each other's atrocities, including, and not limited to, drug abuse and eggplant riding, of course. The incident forces Bartolomeo to hold an impromptu tribunal the next day. He reads out all the sins of the three nuns. Of course, Tommaso and Maria don't get spared too. By the end of the day, Bartolomeo revokes Tommaso's priesthood. Meanwhile, Masetto gets captured and returned to Bruno. As for our favorite nuns, they reconcile as if nothing catastrophic happened. Later, Bruno goes to see Masetto in the dungeon. It seems that nothing has changed since the young man left. Bruno still can't shut his mouth, especially when it comes to his wife. Anyway, Bruno promises to make Masetto suffer for all the wrongs he did him. Realizing the pain waiting for him, Masetto tries convincing the guards to release him. He's hoping that they might oblige him for old time's sake. It fails, and they even have a laugh tricking him. When all hope seems lost for Masetto, a lone turtle with a candle on its back appears. It's from the three nuns, and they've come to rescue Masetto. Alessandra even made an embroidered doll to fool the guards. Strangely enough, it does work. While that happens, Sister Maria leaves the convent with the donkey. She then meets up with Tommaso and rekindles their romance. They almost get busted too, and that's when the girls are returning after saving their favorite eggplant bearer. Fernanda stops for a while after noticing the donkey by itself on the bridge. 
She stares at its plump behind for a while and moves on to return to the convent. The movie ends after Maria and Tomaso run to wherever they're planning to desecrate each other that day. Maybe. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.